So hi everyone, in this tutorial we are going to see how, how to retrain a, a, a module from the, from the deep marketplace on, on our custom dataset. So for example, we are going to see how to retrain, in this case, a general image classifier on a dataset consisting of phytoplankton images. So first of all, these these are the the this is the the written the written version of the tutorial and please in case anything changes the tutorial uh, uh, is recorded for forever but the the updates are going to be in the docs so in case of doubt please always refer to the docs uh, better than this recorded tutorial but just to make things easier like I let's. Uh, I will make available this tutorial to, to everyone. So first of all, uh, we have to we have to check the marketplace for 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 modules with a trainable tag. So for example, this is this is the marketplace, and like as we said, we want to train the image classifier. So this is the image classifier. So if you go to the to the GitHub to the GitHub uh, repo, you will see that that you have extra additional instructions on on how to train the and the image classif uh, on how to prepare the data set for retraining the image classifier and, and so on. So if you read them, you you would you would be able to to, to create a, a a structure like the following. So in our case, the phytoplankton, we have a folder with images. So the, this is the phytoplankton images taken by a flow cam. So and and then along with those images, you have some some txt files that that link some some image name to to some uh, class number, and those classes are 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 again defined here. So zero is class Azineta, uh, one is class Appendicularia, uh, two is class artifacts. So. There you have it. So this is our our dataset in in our local folder in our local local machine. But we, as as the whole point of this this tutorial is to train remotely, we have to upload this 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 dataset from our local machine to our to to some remote storage. So this is done using our next cloud, uh, the, the 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 next cloud instance of the platform. So to access this next cloud instance, you have to log in with a DPM account. So if you don't have one, you should ask for one. So once you log in with the, your DPM account, so so let's 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 fill this this account. So like one once you are there, so you. You, you have to, to upload your data set. So here I have the original data set, but this, uh, this is a, a, a smaller version for, for testing purposes. So to upload this data set, you just drag the folder and, and it will and it will best take some time, but it, it will eventually uh, end up copying, copying fully. So it depends also on, on how how big is your folder on or either if you have lots of small files it usually takes longer longer than few big files so depending on on all those factors it, it might take longer or, so, or 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 more time or less time but it, it will copy everything so the next step so once it it, it uh, now in the meantime uh, when when uh, when this uh, copies so we let, let's let's start um, deploying our machine so for this we go to the dashboard and in the dashboard uh, again we have to log in with the dpm so if you don't have it so again ask for it so in the dashboard we go to the marketplace and we look for our image classifier so this is this is the image classifier so it's same information as in the marketplace so we click in train module. So then we are we are shown a, a, a configuration page. So in this configuration page, we can choose. So we want to train with remote storage again because like this is a, a remote training. So we, we need some remote storage. So we are going to use Jupyter Lab. 
to, to be able to access the, the code. Then we want to train with some GPUs and then and then and then some some the a, a GPU a, a, a GPU tag. So in in order to, to, to train with GPUs we need a, a Docker tag a Docker image that is suited for GPUs. So we select the GPU one because it has NVIDIA drivers and, and, and so on. So as we chose to deploy with Jupyter Lab, we have to provide a Jupyter password. So this is because your Jupyter Lab instance is going to be uh, exposed on a public IP. So if 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 we want to prevent anyone from connecting to it, uh, we have to protect it with a password. So so this is the the point of having a password. So for storage, we are going to use the, the, the next cloud instance of the project. So uh, this is pre-filled and then we, we are asked about a, a username and a user password. And this, is, this can be fetched from, from Nextcloud. So coming back to Nextcloud, we see that the, the, the data set uh, is, is copied. So everything is there. Same with txt files. So now let's generate our, our username and user password. So we go to settings, security, and, and devices and sessions, and then let's generate a, a new token. So once we are, we are, we are shown this, this token, then we, we, we get a username that starts with DPM and and we copy it to, to the configuration form and some user password. Then we can want us, so with this the storage uh, the storage is is the storage configuration is completed and then we can keep tweaking the, the configuration the, the hardware options so maybe ask for eight gigabytes of RAM memory two CPUs and one GPU. So you can provide some description and then and then you are you are done so you would click submit i'm not submitting this 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 deployment because i i have a, a deployment already prepared but uh, if you if you would click submit you would go to the deployments page and then you will see your deployment being created so it's in pending status and then once uh, after a couple of minutes then then you will see uh, create complete status so this is the, the, the deployment I have already prepared. So if it's, if it's the first time you, you access this, uh, your deployment, you will see that this, this, this whole window is, is empty and then you are asked for a login password and this is the password um, you, 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 you used in the configuration page. So if, if it's the, the first time uh, to you access uh, this, 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 this the this Jupyter lab you also have to do an additional step with to to keep to end uh, to finish configuring a clone and this is to 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 input those two those two parameters and then and then you you would be done the this uh, not two parameters these two commands and then and then uh, everything would would be would be configured so we can check uh, our configuration is is ready so we can see if it's what are the remote storage it's uh, it's fine so it's finding a share that is our next cloud and then it's finding let's see let's let's ask about 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 that that remote so it says we have used uh, one 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 gigabyte and a half of, of of storage in that in that remote. So we can also check we have uh, an a GPU available. So this is this is on GPU, fifteen gigabytes. So everything is fine. So now that we have we have done all those checks, it's time to to copy back the the, the data from our next cloud to to this to this machine. So. As you will see, the, the data the data file here is is empty, so we have to to, to bring the, the data from Nextcloud to to this machine. So in this case, 
so let's 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 use erclone copy so erclone copy is 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 the command to to copy uh, data from from remote to to uh, to local and from local to remote so we copy from our remote air share with some path to our local path and then and then same for for images so same again and you see it's it's being copied here okay so now that we have our data uh, it's time to to start training so we we just we we have to launch the dpass api and if you if you see probably the first if you haven't launched the dpass api and you have launched uh, if you have uh, a machine with JupyterLab but without launching the, the Dpass API in the in the terminal, what you would get if you try to access the, the Dpass API is just an, an empty an empty endpoint, so it finds nothing. But once you 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 launch the Dpass API in the in the terminal, uh, you see that that you can find actually the Dpass API. So we can we can we can go to the post the train method and and then try to do a, a small training so let's say we want we want uh, to turn 15 epochs and 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 so on okay so you can go to the to the history of of this of this of this of this deployment and and you will see that you have a new training being being running run and then and then you can also check the logs in the inside the Jupyter the Jupyter the Jupyter Lab instance. So in case your 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 module supports uh, supports some monitoring so as it's the case in, in, in these image classifications for for example this image classification module has has monitoring enabled uh, via tensorboard so uh, you can you can always check what's what's going on during the training if you if you go to the monitor endpoint so right now it's empty because it refreshes uh, after after each epoch so like you have to wait some uh, a bit but after it each epoch the metrics in the dashboard will will refresh so for example this is the first epoch being run and then and then you will see on, on real time how how the accuracy and the loss of the of the of the of the model is improving so yeah let's wait till the end and see you then So now you see that the train has is done. So no more, no more. We have completed the fifteen epochs, and and, uh, and and you can see the 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 improvement of the accuracy over time. So if we want to 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 test this 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 new model, we have to kill first DPAS and then restart it, so that it it is able to find this this new model. And if we go to to, to our UI to the to the API, so you will you will you see this. You, we go to this predict post predict post method, and then we find that we have a new timestamp. So this is the new our new training model, and this is and we can we can input some some test image. So we actually don't care very much about the results because it was a very small data set and, and a very small training but just to, to check that everything works well so we get some, some labels and, 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 and some probabilities with those labels so yeah everything works, works well so we can we can kill 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 DPAS and we can also close the monitoring and, and the history so 
now that we 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 we, we know that that we have a, a, a model that we a working model we have to to move this model to the next cloud so this is the so and and this model has also to be to uh, we have to be able to download this model uh, in a tar file so 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 that it can be downloaded by our our docker repo our docker container so to do this so as you can see if you go to next cloud and you go to the models the the phytoplankton is is empty there's there's no models here so we have to 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 first uh, we have to create a first a, a tar file of, of our model and then and then and then move move it to 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 next cloud so let's move to the models folder sorry there was some noise outside so we again we move to the to the models folder and uh, we we create a, a tar file about uh, of, of our of our new model so the folder name is is the timestamp and the tar file is let's call it phytoplankton set so let's create a tar file <laughs> so once the tar file is created we we, we we will copy from from our remote storage from our deployment to, to the mod the models from our deployment to our remote storage. So actually my the remote storage location I want is this one. So let's copy it. So I'm copying a clone from our uh, a local path to a remote path. So this is this is done and yes it should it should update here. So yes, here you have it. So it's it's successfully copied. So for the next step, I have to make uh, this this star file publicly available, so that I can download it from my Docker container. So you just click on share, create a share link, and if you go to this share link, uh, you see this this you find this file so we copy this link address and let's paste it somewhere somewhere here okay so mm, okay now next step is creating a, a, a docker repo so for this we are going to use a, a, a tool we call cookie cutter uh, it, that is called cookie cutter and and it's it's a tool that that enables you to to create some 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 repo from from an existing template so we provide a template here in this in this github direction and and this it it prefills the template with the with the answers to some questions so let's go in let's go on and run this this cookie cutter so yes okay so which which is the module uh, the deep module we we just retrain so uh, this is the this is deep oc image classification so this is fine so let's 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 keep it that, that way. So which is the, the git URL we, we want to use. So I'm going to use uh, my personal uh, GitHub account. You should use any account you, you want that provided that you have uh, writing permissions on it. So it can be either your personal account, your, uh, your group's account, whatever. But you must be able to, to create a repo and to write a repo on that account. So let's imagine. Uh, let's 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 input a a, 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 sh a a project name. So let's say phytoplankton phytoclass phytoplankton classification, 
a repo name, it's going to be the same. Author name, again, that's me. Author email, this is this is again me, so but I can take an email, so email at gmail.com and some description. Choose a mid license and yeah, everything is set. So let's let's see what we have created. So basically, the two files you want to interact with are the metadata.json. So this is the information that is going to be present in the in the marketplace. So some module description, some 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 names some titles so whatever so but in principle you you could leave this this file as as such if you if you change it you you probably want to to validate the that you haven't messed with the json structure so you can use this deep schema validator app, uh, program and if you have some error it will output your your error so this for the moment it's fine so and the, the main the main file you want to, to, to interact with is the docker file so as you see this docker file inherits from 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 the uh, the main the the module we retrained on so it's this deep image classification tensorflow so and if you if you so in our case what we want is to is to is to is to remove the, the the default model and to and to and to and to replace it with our newly trained model. So in this in the image classification case, it it looks something like this. So we have a a, a, a remote URL where our model is located. So let's 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 replace that URL with with our actual URL. So if you remember, we had it copied somewhere here. So mm, yeah. So we remove this trailing bar. So yeah. And we have some some tar file. This is that is the name is phytoplankton.tar.xz. So then we remove the existing models. We download the, the, the tar file from from our uh, from our container, and and then and then we uncompress the tar file to, to extract the folder. So this should be should be should be fine then. So let's try that everything works. So for this we let's go on and, and build our project. has downloaded like around 18 megabytes of, of data so that's that's our tar file and now it's uncompressing it <clears throat> okay so the the module successfully built and and now we can we can we can run it so let's let's check what what we have here so what is the output of so as you see it's running dpass and it's not yet available but so let's let's wait till it so now it should be working so as you see you, you have dpass dpass correctly running we can check that the predict function actually has this is our timestamp so it has our new new model uh, our new model installed so yeah, everything works fine. So now it's the last step. So now for, for in, if you want to integrate your module with the marketplace, 
first you have to upload your module to, to GitHub. So again, remember that you provided a, a GitHub username and, and, and a module name. So if 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 so we have to go to, to the username to the username or the, the, the organization you provided and, and and create a new repo. So this is the name we, we provided in the cookie cutter and and let's create a repo so once it's created you can go here so let's let's kill the docker and let's check the changes so we just modified the docker file so let's commit update docker file and let's push the changes so we actually have to set the upstream and here you have it so your changes are in github and then you have one last step so last step is 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 make a pull request to the to 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 a mod to here, so you would click in in, in make the, the pull request online, and and you will make a, a pull request to this file that is actually tracking all the modules uh, in 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 the marketplace. So you would add your new module. So your new module looks like this. So instead of of using this, you see. So you would put uh, your your GitHub username or where you have your module hosted, and remember it's tipo C and in your case it was tipo C Fito Fito class. So you would create this pull request and someone will eventually approve approve it. So and that's it. You will have. Once once your pull request is uh, is approved, you can make a, a change in the metadata.json and commit it, and and the continuous integration pipeline will run, and and your module will be will be rendered in the in the in the marketplace. So you will see you will see your module in along here along all the all the other ones. So I hope this tutorial was useful and as always in case of doubt please check the, the documentation that, that is going to be updated quite quite often. So yeah, thanks for all and see you.